What is up? This is Steven with NorCal Screen Print Supply. Excited to get back in the saddle with another video. Super excited today. We're gonna print some coffee bags. And I got my bag here. This is a craft paper bag. And uh, we'll link to this bag in the description below. And also we're gonna do some art by a good buddy of ours, Jose Monzo. We got a trail for coffee. We're gonna get this going. We're gonna print it onto these coffee bags. We're gonna take you along with us. So stay tuned. Right now what I'm doing is laying down the film on my platen and I'm I'm going to see where I need to place the films on the screen to print the bags how I want them printed. Got the bags. So here by, by just laying this out I can tell on my film that my two logos are far enough away from each other to where I'm going to be able to line up these bags and get a nice print two at a time. If we really wanted to go crazy we could try to do four at a time or six at a time but given that this is my first run with this, I'm gonna go ahead and do it two at a time and I think they'll come out good. Let's go burn a screen. All right, ready to go here. We're gonna burn this on a 230 mesh. And with a 230, we're printing water-based ink. So a 230 is good for that runny water-based ink and it won't let too much ink through. Since we're printing on a hard surface, the coffee bag, we don't want a low mesh count because the ink will squeeze out beyond the print area and it'll blur our print. So, 2.30. Yeah. Here we go. Boom, screen's just exposed. We are gonna pre-develop this screen by dipping it into a tank of only water. I'm gonna dip it in the tank. We're gonna submerge this screen in water for about a minute to two minutes. You can do it less than two minutes. You can do it longer than two minutes. It really doesn't matter. As long as your emulsion has been hardened by the light, you're good and it will not break it down. I'm gonna go ahead and submerge it in the water. Gonna let it sit for a few minutes. All right, let's have a look and see how it came out. So our emulsion is still intact, but you can tell that our exposed emulsion is lighter. That's exactly what we want. So this should rinse out real easily. So let's go rinse it out. All right, you can tell with minimal rinsing all clear and has come out. All my exposed emulsion has rinsed out. I can read all of my text. All the E's, the A's, the zeros, the dots, good to go. Best way to dry our newly rinsed screen is in the sun. The sun will post expose the emulsion and continue to harden it. So our screen is not quite dry yet. It's getting there. We're not in full sunlight. We got a partly cloudy day here in Northern California. So what Chris is doing right now is applying a chemical hardening agent to the screen after we have exposed it, rinsed it out, and dried it. The chemical hardener is gonna harden the emulsion and allow it to stand up to our water-based ink. So if you're using emulsion that is not resistant to water, the water in the water-based ink will break down the emulsion and ruin your stencil. So chemically hardening your screen will prevent screen breakdown when you're using water-based. We also offer chemical hardener on our website, norcalsps.com. One side. So we're gonna place this back over here against the fence and let it dry, and then we'll get our print set up.
What I'm trying to do now is kind of figure out where to place my bags to get my stencils to come down perfectly and be centered on my bag where I want the print to land. So I think I have it set about right. Now I'm gonna mark these with a Sharpie. I'm actually gonna put some tape around the outside as a guide to know where to set the bags. Stay tuned. This is a Sharpie. You should have plenty of Sharpies in your shop at all times. Very useful tool, Sharpie. Fat point, skinny point, fine tip, Sharpie. So you can almost like, the tape is almost enough to stop the bag when I move it. Cause you kind of want to butt the bag up against the tape. I think we might be ready to print a bag. So I set our tape up for guides as to where I put our bags, but I think I want to tape down a piece of a cleanup card on each side. That way we can actually slide the bags into place by butting them up against our cards. So I'm gonna cut these in half and then I'm gonna place them on here on our guides. These are also called registration tabs. Used a lot in poster printing. To keep your colors coming down in the right spots. By having these registration tabs, we will be able to print more bags faster since we'll be able to use the guides to line them up quickly. When you're printing water-based ink, you want your print run to go fairly fast because your ink will dry in the screen. And if your ink dries in the screen, you have to burn a new screen usually. It's really hard to get out. So we're gonna keep our screen very flooded during the print run and we have these registration tabs to speed up our process a little bit, allowing us to get the bags into print position quicker. So that's beautiful, boom. So I can slide this down, slide it down, with the registration tab and over, and that's right where I want it. Slide that down and over, that's right where I want it. Bring my screen down, both of them are centered. That's what we want, that's what we want. Blue 72 going down onto the screen. Exciting moment in screen printing is when you take the ink out of the container and put it onto the screen. We're gonna put quite a bit, but first we're gonna give it a little bit of a stir here. It's nice and runny, that's what I want. I'm gonna put quite a bit on there because we're gonna keep our screen nice and flooded. Because keep in mind, this is water-based ink and it will dry in the screen like we've talked about already, so. Okay, we've printed our first two. They look pretty good. Got a little bit of a clog right there, so we're gonna pay extra attention there, but overall, I think I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. So I'm keeping my print area flooded with ink so that it keeps the print area nice and moist and the ink doesn't dry in the print area. So now I'm gonna try to go ahead and give it a really firm squeegee stroke. And it looks like I think I, I cleared my print area there. I think that will be a good one, but it's a little bit difficult to tell. Let's see, we, got, we have a missing... Uh, Not too bad. So by the way this is printing right now, I can already tell instead of a 230, I would run this on a 305. 
because our print is blowing out a little bit here and there. But keep in mind, this is artisanal coffee, artisanal labels, DIY, so it's gonna have a little bit of charm, a little bit of character. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so there you have it. First run of Trail Fork Coffee Boutique coffee bags. I would say if I had to rate this uh, on a one to 10 scale, I'd say about a five. I got some decent bags, but I would set this up a little bit differently. I would use a higher mesh, a 305 mesh probably. And then I would also make my logo a little bit smaller so it's further away from the vent valve in the coffee bag, which is causing some off contact here. Um, and then they have a, a crease right here in the bottom. The further you are away from these things, uh, these irregularities, the further you are away from them, the better your print's gonna come out. We are always available to answer any questions about projects like this. We love to see people doing cool projects like this. Uh, we have a variety of products on our website and services to help you take on projects like this. So hit us up on our website, norcalsps.com, also on Instagram, Facebook, etc, etc. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.